feels good listening to you. And thank you, Adil. You know, first, I must compliment you on creating this platform. I've been hearing about it. I've been seeing it over the years. I just look at this room. It's amazing. Prithviraj, that was an excellent presentation. I'm so glad you spoke about well-being, of happiness. We keep following it. But I must tell you, the initial part was very scary. If I'd heard it, nobody would want to be a CFO. And it's a fact. You guys probably have one of the toughest jobs in the world today. The CFO's job. You're the heart of a body, and a body which is running a 100-meter sprint pace for a long-distance run. And you have to keep supplying that energy, that blood, relentlessly right through. And you are in a world where everything is possible, but nothing is certain. Just think about it. And the problem is, you are expected to make it all possible. And you are expected to make it all certain. I know you're all nodding your heads. It is a fact. And think about it again. The average age of CFOs, I'm not saying the age on job, which you said is down to 3.6 years or whatever. The average age when you became a CFO, I'm told has gone down by 30% in the past 10 years. You can't take the stress. It's humanly impossible. Because everything falls into your lap. You may say HR is not your job or everything. You've made everything their job, Prithviraj. Give something else away. And yet, you have to perform. You're being sent into a lion's den without any armors with you. I don't envy you. But let me tell you, if there is yet another person who has an equally difficult job, it is a person who has to make public policy today. It is one of the toughest jobs. Because remember, you had some laws today which were created in 1889 by the British and they were still functional because they still had some applicability. Whenever you create a policy, you hope that it last you at least next 10, 20, 30 years. Today, it doesn't even last you five years because everything is changing. We are all going through one of the most challenging times in our lives and we do not realize it. You know, my son who's just graduated is doing a project on happiness and he's trying to create a portal on it. And I was just reading that one of the toughest things in this world going forward, and why am I discussing it more? Because Sonjoy and all, we both now senior citizens, apart from getting discounts. Right, right, it's a fact, it's a fact. Loneliness is now going to be the toughest thing going forward. And I'm sorry, I don't want to sound morbid, because Prithviraj has scared you enough. But let me put it in a closer context of where you all are functioning. He was talking about 3.5x of GDP growth. Don't ever say that. It is impossible, Prithviraj. Everybody would want to move to a US and Europe where it is 0 0.5 or 0 0.1. I was just coming from a level of senior diplomats, etc., and we were discussing the inflection point of India. And I was saying we are now just going to be entering that inflection point. And it's very important for all of you. So just think, from 2015 until 2021, six years, five, six years, you got 135 million people out of poverty in six years. What was the other thing which happened? In these six years, you added only $1 trillion to your GDP. From 3 trillion, you became 4 trillion. So 1 trillion, you got 135 million people out of poverty. Next year, you will get 35 million people out of poverty. Next year itself. 
Now, why am I telling you this? See the progression of how things are changing. And why do I call that you are at that inflection point? This is your fourth trillion. So you see the first trillion, 60 years, then the next trillion, eight years, third trillion, six years, fourth trillion, five years. Your eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th trillion will all be in less than 14 to 15 months each. Just think of the change which will happen then. There's the same change which happened in China from 2008 9 to 2017. They added a trillion every year. It changes every aspect of your existence. Every aspect. Each of those youngsters are now at a different point in their lifestyle, in their aspiration, in their expectation. And that is just one element of change which I'm bringing to you. Think about the technology which is changing. And think about how you have to lead the world in that change. Each of you will have to deliver on that. Because it is very simple to be number three, four, five, because then you're following somebody else. You are going to be the trailblazers on that. And look at the pace at which that change is happening. It was just linked the other day. Look at the company called Mensa. Gets incorporated in the month of May as a startup. And in the month of November, it becomes a unicorn. And who is in the center and the heart of it? The CFO. Think of a company which just starts and in 180 days gets 100 million customers physically. See what they have to do to make it happen. Who has to do it? You. Individually. Everybody will play their role, but as you shared, everybody will point the finger at you. Frankly, it is humanly impossible. You know what it takes to get 100 million customers. How do you acquire them? How do you service them? How do you function with them? How do you ensure they're financed? How do you get everything going for them? And now becomes the last two parts. Two industries in the world which have withstood the force of disruption and are holding back. The first is education. Everybody is getting challenged that four years bachelor's degree in the US, nobody needs it. Okay, we all have to study in 12 months, we are and all that. So that's one industry now which is going to get completely disrupted, which has held on so far. The second one, banking and finance. All the changes which have so far been adopted are at the periphery of the industry. Today you rely a lot on investment banks and consulting. Sorry, Vishnu. To my mind, any job which does not figure in that matrix of national income, you know that national income ka jo matrix who adds value, where creation of value is going to go. I've been an investment banker. Every time my team used to come and apply for an investment bank job somewhere, I used to tell them it will not last you 36 months. They are going. The responsibility will come on to you. For the first time, you had a Fortune 10 company which did one of its largest raising, raisings, capital raisings without needing an investment bank. They went directly to the people. These are just the simpler ways your jobs are changing. 
the greater things are the responsibilities which is sitting on you. I think what is very critical is the expectation of the role of the CXOs, the COO, the CFO. The CEO roles in any case are becoming shorter and shorter in their life. We know it because they can't exist. Nobody can manage the change so far. You guys are supposed to hold that ship steady. You are supposed to bring that continuity. You are supposed to bring it the fuel. You are supposed to give it the growth. Even if I get the triumvirate of Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh together, they will not be able to perform the kind of things which are required of you. Our expectation from this role of a CFO has to change. This role will have to get redefined. You have created a community which is known to be CFOs and CEOs across the globe. Large number of companies prefer Indian CFOs. You're right. Even on a weekend, they'll take your call and there is nothing called a holiday. You would do the same, Vishwajit. We all do it. That will not go away. The thing is, how do you create those matrices and how do you create those expectations from within the organizations? I don't have an answer. But yes, all I do say is you are now running into a period which is of very rapid disruption in the country where you are. You're suddenly going to be opening up 1.4 billion customers, each one of you, regardless of the product you're selling. Until now, it was very simple that you could not reach them. Now that excuse is gone. All time, every time, just think how you're going to manage 1.4 billion connect points. It's a crazy thought. None of us had to do it in our lives. And that's where I see when I see that the average age is coming down, make, takes me to your point, which you need wellness. It's impossible these days. So what I do want to leave behind with you is how do you manage both up and down and your teams around on that expectation? How do you manage to manage the impossible, which is what you all have to do? You're now sitting in a ship which is heading to be the next superpower. I was just at this conference of Sark. You are leading it, 99% of the GDP is you. Just imagine 9,000 days from today, 22% of the world's GDP will be from you. 21% of the workforce will be you. 21% of the population will be you. It just goes on. And there are just a few of you who will be steering that ship. So with that, on that very morbid and sad note, let me first congratulate all of you for being here. I think the recognitions which you're bringing for them are extremely well deserved. The only thing I will say, that's also because I'm on the wrong side of 60, take care of your health. Nothing else will last you. The rest will all happen. Thank you. Thank you.